Failing Forward by John C. Maxwell About five years after I've been into the business world, my elder brother mocked me. In one of our heated arguments, he said, You see, after these years you've bragged that you'll become rich, here you are, still wearing my clothes. To my brother, if you've tried to build a business for five years and make no money, you're a failure. <laughs> Do you want to blame my brother? No, don't blame him. Blame the school system instead. In school, failure is an indication that you're stupid, but that's just because school itself is very stupid. Sorry for hurting you if you're one of those who worship school. <laughs> I'm very sorry. But you see, in the real world, failure is an indication that you're making progress. In fact, the amount of times you failed in the last 12 months is directly correlated to how successful you can become in the next few years. The first major lesson in the failing forward is, failure isn't the opposite of success, but the road to it. By the way, if this is your first time on our channel, welcome to our world and consider subscribing because we'll help you to read all the world's best business books under 7 minutes. Now let's move to the second major lesson in failing forward. If as you watch this video you're planning to start a business, what actually are you thinking? For most people, starting a business means that you will soon be making a lot of money. I'm sorry, it may not happen and you need to have the right mindset right now. When I decided to be an entrepreneur, I made a plan to spend the first decade making mistakes. This mindset was the reason why I could laugh when my brother thought I was a failure because I knew I wasn't. What most people try to do with their lives is to avoid failure as much as possible. Steve Harvey said, if you want to change your life, you have to make the jump. You can't stay on the fence. You can't hope things change. You must be proactive and take actions. Yes, if you try to make the jump, you'll get wounded. But it's alright because even if you take no risk, you're still taking a risk. Yes, if you're afraid of failures, you're actually failing already. The second lesson in the failing forward is, failure is inevitable, so embrace it. In the year 1886, a pharmacist named John Pemberton was looking for a cure for his headache when he accidentally invented the now most famous brand in the world, Coca-Cola. Stories of accidental inventions and failures leading to bigger success abound all around us and that's more reason why you should embrace failures. I've started out many business projects only to end up with an entirely different concept. Many a times because of some mistakes. What if I'm afraid of stepping out? What if I was waiting for the perfect map? You can travel around the physical world with a map but not in the realm of achievement. To achieve anything significant with your life, you have to be willing to jump out even without a map, without any certainty. Stop looking for a map. Be stupid enough to go out without one. The third major lesson in this book is, failures do lead to success. Failures do lead to success, right? Well, not always. At least, not when we don't learn from our mistakes and failures. Life most of the times isn't a kind teacher. We all know that she teaches us with mistakes and failures. However, what we may not be aware of this is, until we learn from those mistakes and failures, life assumes that we need few more failures. It's okay to fail. Let me tell you something else that's okay. It's okay to cry. Yes, I've failed and cried couples of times in the last decade. Be courageous to fail. It's fine. You can cry. It's okay. Slap yourself in the face. Just make sure it isn't too hot, okay? <laughs> but after all these drama, sit back and learn from your mistakes because if you don't do so, you failed indeed. The fourth major lesson in this book is learn from your failures. When I was a young guy of around 17, I read a book called Maximum Achievement by Brian Tracy. From this book, I learned how to set goals and started practicing goal setting. By setting goals, I was able to outperform almost all my age mates in school and in real life. What's magical about goal setting? Nothing really. The only thing goal setting does for you is keep you focused and motivated. And that's all you need to be courageous enough to go out and get your hands dirty. By setting goals, you can have the picture of the future. Because your brain can picture the future, it can endure temporary defeats. If you've been wondering why your favorite motivational speakers always talk about goal setting, now you know why. 
The fifth major lesson in this book is set inspiring goals that will encourage you to take actions and fail. What lessons do you think I missed in this book? What points would you like to add? Which good books would you like our team to summarize next? We'd love to receive your comments. If you love this summary, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. You can look at the description box to download my free business book which I call The 13 Secrets School Did Not Teach You About How To Be Rich and look at the screen now to click the next video we recommend for you. We love you.